Hello students, welcome to Legacy IS Academy. Today we are going to discuss about the recently concluded UPSC prelims examination general studies paper 1. So let us start and try to look at the question that has been asked and what are the possible solutions of these particular questions. So first of all the question as you can see is taken from the uh, we can say economy subject and the question is very simple and straightforward. It has been asked regarding that we talk about the rapid financial instrument as well as the rapid credit facilities are related to provisions of lending by which one of the following again it is a static question that has been asked also from the current affairs perspective the correct answer for this is imf that is international monetary fund the second question is again from the prelims uh, economy subject regarding the two concepts nea that is nominal exchange rate and the rea that is real effective exchange rate so for this particular question answer will be c one and three why? Because an increase in nominal effective exchange rate indicates the appreciation of rupee. That is right. Appreciation of rupee means rupee is a strengthening as compared to dollar. NER is uh, uh, actually a measurement of India's currency, which is, uh, we can say, measured in terms of the collective currencies of the different trading partners. So it is kind of NER is calculation of India's exchange rate with respect to a basket of currencies with India's trading partner. So this statement is absolutely correct. The second statement is that an increase in the real effective exchange rate indicates an improvement in the trade competitiveness. This statement is incorrect because if the exchange rate, real exchange rate increases, that means the rupee is becoming stronger. And if rupee is becoming stronger, that will decrease the trade competitiveness because the export competitiveness of India will decrease. So second statement is incorrect. Third statement, increasing trend in domestic inflation related to inflation in other countries is likely to cause increasing divergence between need and need. Again, this statement is uh, absolutely correct because the divergence between these two represent the inflation trace as NER does not take inflation into account while RER takes inflation into account. So that was the simple question. The third question again is a straightforward question The I can say it is the easiest out of all these three basic concepts of economy. That is, if inflation is too high, RBI is likely to buy government securities. That is incorrect. If inflation becomes higher, RBI will sell government securities. Second is, if the rupee is rapidly depreciating, RBI is likely to sell dollars in the market. This is true because by selling dollars in the market, RBI try to increase the uh, demand of rupees. And if the demand of rupee increases, then the rupee will start to appreciate. So depreciation can be stopped. Then third is if interest rate in US or European Union were to fall, that is likely to induce RBI to buy dollars. This statement is also correct because in this case, RBI is trying to buy dollar so that the demand of dollar is increasing and demand of rupees relatively is lesser so that India can become a good or we can say favorable uh, uh, export dis uh, favorable, uh, we can say so that India can become a favorable investment uh, so that India can become favorable investment uh, country. Fourth is with reference to G20 common framework consider the following statement. It is an initiative endorsed by G20 together with Paris club that is again factual statement correct. It is an initiative to support low income countries with unsustainable debt. This statement is also correct. The main initiative of G20 is main uh, objective of this G20 common framework is the second one. So for this correct answer we see both one and two. Fifth is, with reference to Indian economy, what are the advantage of inflation index bonds? The bond that yields return in terms of uh, taking into com uh, consideration of the actual inflation prevailing in the country. So government can reduce the coupon rate on its borrowing by way of IABs, that is correct. Second is IABs provide protection to the investor from uncertainty regarding inflation. That is obviously correct because this is the main objective of IABs B bond. Because earlier what used to happen in normal bonds, if inflation rate is 8% and the bond are giving you yield of 6%, 7%, that means you are not gaining any money in future. You are actually losing money. So the main advantage of IIB is that it protects investor against the sudden increase in the inflation. Third is the interest received as well as capital gained on IIBs are not taxable. That is absolutely incorrect. The both capital gains on the IIBs uh, and the interest received on the IIBs are under the tax bracket. Then coming to the sixth question, that is with reference to foreign owned e-commerce firms operating in India, which is the following statement is correct. So they can sell their own goods in addition to offering their platforms as a marketplace. 
This is an incorrect statement. The foreign owned e commerce firm recently, the government has decided that they can just host the buyers and sellers, they can just act as a medium or we can say act as an intermediary between buyers and sellers. They cannot sell their own goods apart from the actual, uh, ap um, apart from acting as a platform. So that is incorrect. Second statement is the degrees to which they can own big sellers on their platform is also limited. So second statement is actually a correct statement. The next is which of the following activities constitute real sector in the economy. So basically real sector is defined as a sector of economy which excludes financial and banking sector. So all the sectors of the economy that excludes financial and banking sector, for example, transport, communication, uh, farming, all will come under the real sector. So here it will be farmers harvesting their crops. Absolutely. Second textile mills converting raw cotton into fabric. Absolutely. Again, commercial bank is there, so it will not be real sector. And again, corporate body using rupee denominated bond sources, that is also incorrect. So correct answer will be one and two. So this is a straightforward definition based question. Next, which one of the following situation based reflects indirect transfers often talked about in media recently with reference to India. So simple definition is there. What is the indirect transfer? It is a transfer which is made by a foreign company where it tries to transfer the shares and such shares derive their substantial value from assets that is located within India. That is called as indirect transfer. Then the ninth question is with reference to the expenditure made by an organization or a company, which of the following standards are correct? So we have three options here, acquiring new technology is capital expenditure and second is debt financing is considered capital expenditure while equity financing is considered revenue expenditure. So the second statement is incorrect. It is actually the acquire acquisition of new technology obviously is a capital expenditure because when you acquire new technology, you will use this to produce some other intermediary or final goods. So that is a kind of capital expenditure while debt financing, it comes under the revenue expenditure. Okay, that is why this statement is incorrect. So correct statement is only one. So correct option is A. Then the 10th question is with reference to the Indian economy, consider the following statements. A share of the household financial saving goes toward government borrowing. That is absolutely correct. Second is dated securities issued at market related rates and auctions from large components of internal debt. That is also correct statement. So C, the correct option for 10th question is C, both one and two are correct. Then coming to 11th, from here we have beginning of policy section. So the first statement is pursuant to the report of HN Sanyal committee, the contents of Court Act 1971 was passed. This was absolutely correct statement. Second is the Constitution of India empowers the Supreme Court and High Court to punish for contempt of the self. That is also correct. Both High Court and Supreme Court can uh, punish any person if it believes that a person is in contempt with the court, whether it can be a civil contempt or it can be the criminal contempt. The third option is the Constitution of India defines civil contempt and criminal contempt. This is incorrect statement. As per the Constitution, there is no such definition that what is uh, categorized as civil contempt, what is categorized as criminal contempt. And the fourth is the India, the parliament is vested with powers to make laws on contempt of court. That is absolutely correct statement. So for this particular question, answer B, the option B will be the correct option. Then we have next, that is with reference to India, consider the following statement. Government law officers and legal firms are recognized as advocates, but corporate lawyers and patent attorneys, uh, patent attorneys are excluded from recognition as advocates. This statement is a incorrect statement. Second is bar councils have the power to lay down the rules relating to legal education and recognition of law colleges. That is also an uh, incorrect statement. So the correct option will be neither one nor two. Then coming to the 13th question. Again, it is a polity based question. So here is statement second and third. If we look at this, these are the correct statement. That is when a constitution amendment will is presented to the president of India, it is obligatory for the president of India to give his or her assent. Third is a constitutional amendment will must be passed by both the Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha by a special majority and no provision for joint sitting. Because in case of passage of constitutional amendment bill, both the houses, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha enjoy equal power. The joint sitting can be, uh, can, joint sitting can be arranged for such provisions, passage of such bills where the Lok Sabha is kind of uh, dominating because Lok Sabha is having, uh, having an upper hand because if two uh, joint sitting is happening, of course, Lok Sabha has higher number of members. So the Lok Sabha will trump Rajya Sabha. But that is not the case for CAA, Constitutional Amendment Bill. So second and third statement is correct. First is a bill amending the constitution requires a prior recommendation of President of India. This is incorrect statement. It does not require prior uh, recommendation. 
prior recommendation is required in the case of money bill. Fourteenth, we have is the Constitution of India classifies the minister into four ranks. This is incorrect statement because the Constitution does not classify just a conventional form how we are dividing the ministers into different ranks. Then this second statement is absolutely correct. That is, it has been limited that in union government, including the prime minister, the total number of minister cannot exceed more than fifteen percent the strength of Lok Sabha. So correct option will be B in this case. Fifteenth is which of the following is the exclusive power of Lok Sabha? So to ratify the declaration of emergency, that is not correct. Both the houses have to ratify it. To pass a motion of no confidence against the consular minister, this is absolutely correct because if you look at the uh, polity book, what we can see is the consul of ministers are responsible to not the parliament, but they are responsible to the Lok Sabha, and that is why no confidence motion has to be passed by the Lok Sabha. Second is to impeach the president of India. Again, here both the houses enjoy equal power. If impeachment of the president has to be carried out, it has to be passed by both Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. So, correct option obviously will be B, second only. Then tenth, sixteenth question is. Anti defection law in India. So the law specifies that a nominated legislator cannot join any political party within six months. This option is absolutely incorrect. It says that a nominated legislator cannot join any political party. Does not matter whatever time it is. The case what is given here is something that can be applied to independent legislator. They can or they should join political party within the period of six months. Second is the law does not provide any time frame within which the president of uh, presiding officer has to decide decide a defection case. That is absolutely correct. There is no such provision that a uh, presiding officer is the speaker of Lok Sabha. So, uh, as per his wish, he can determine that when he will decide about that cases. Seventeenth is the Attorney General of India and the Solicitor General of India are the only officers of the government who are allowed to participate in the meetings of Parliament of India. This is also incorrect statement. Second is according to the Constitution of India, the Attorney General of India submits his re resignation when the government which appoints him resigns. This is also incorrect statement. Attorney General can be removed by the President of India any time uh, he wants, even before the government resigns. So correct option will be D. Neither one nor two. For question number eighteen, with reference to the writs issued by the courts in India, consider the following statement. Mandamus will not lie against a private organization unless it is entrusted with a public duty. This is absolutely correct statement. Second is Mandamus will not lie against a company even though it may be a government company. This is incorrect statement. Mandamus will lie against the company even if the company is a government company. Third is any public minded person can be a petitioner to move the court to obtain the writ of co warranto. That is correct. It does not have to be necessarily the aggrieved party who has who can move only co warranto. Any person, public minded person in the interest of public can move to the court for enforcement of co warranto. So, correct option will be C1 and 3 only. Then, 19th is with reference to Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission, consider the following statement. Private and public hospital must adopt it. This is necessary. Second is as it aims to achieve universal health coverage, every citizen of India should be part of it. Ultimately, that is the whole concept of universal health coverage. That means all the citizens of India should be covered under certain insurance or certain benefit scheme. And third is it has seamless portability across the country. That is also correct. The digital uh, info, we can see the digital platform of this particular mission is very very robust and enjoys a seamless portability. So correct option will be D, one, two, and three. Coming to 20th, with reference to the Deputy Speaker of Lok Sabha, consider the following statement. So, as per the rules of procedure and conduct of business in Lok Sabha, the election of Deputy Speakers shall be held and such date as the Speaker may fix. This is correct statement. The Speaker determines when the election has to be held. Second is there is mandatory provision that the election of candidate as Deputy Speaker of Lok Sabha shall be from either the principal opposition party or the ruling party. This is incorrect. Because the Lok Sabha collectively is choosing the Deputy Speaker, so it does not matter which party he or she is coming from. Third is the deputy speaker has the same power as of the speaker when presiding over the sitting of the houses. This is absolutely correct. Deputy speaker enjoy the same powers and privileges when he is acting in the role of a speaker. Fourth, the well-established parliamentary practice regarding the appointment of deputy speaker is that a motion is moved by the speaker and duly seconded by the prime minister. This is incorrect statement. It is not seconded by prime minister. It does not have to be seconded by prime minister. A motion also does not have to be moved by speaker uh, necessarily. It can be moved by any member of the parliament. So, correct option will be A, one and three only. Now, coming to the question number twenty-first. Among the following crops, which one of the most important anthropogenic? Anthropogenic refers to human-induced sources of both methane and nitrous oxide. 
so we know that when rice or paddy field is cultivated when it is irrigated it will be put under water and during this process of decay a large amount of methane gas is released actually the paddy fields are one of the largest emitter of methane in the atmosphere second not only methane but since it contain nitrates in the root the nitrous oxide when it reacts with oxygen is also released by the paddy cultivation so correct option will be rice cotton cannot be there because cotton grows in a dry area similarly wheat can also not be there because wheat does not require that much water as it grows in a is a kind of uh, rubby crop so grows in the winter season and then we have sugarcane that does not releases uh, any kind of methane so correct option will be b rice only. next is the system of rice intensification also called as sri system in the short in which alternate wetting and drying of rice field is practiced results in reduced seed requirement reduced methane production reduced lipstick consumption so all of these three are correct sri system actually is beneficial as compared to conventional uh, rice cultivation system in the manner that conventional rice system requires continuous flooding of the field for at least 2 3 weeks after the sowing and even after that however in the system of rice intensification intensification the uh, number of days till which the crops have to be submerged or the seedlings have to be submerged under the water is relatively lower so if water requirement is lower what will happen electricity consumption will be less why because electricity is consumed in pumping the water and providing irrigation facilities so the amount of water is less required and that is why electricity consumption will also be lesser reduced seed requirement yes because the yield of the yield by the sre system is much more higher as compared to the yield by the conventional farming system and reduced methane production again same logic because if the rice fields remain submerged for a smaller period of time the amount of methane that will be released will be lesser so 1 2 and 3 d is the correct option next is again a very factual question which of the following lakes of west africa has become dry and turned into a desert so the correct answer is lake fagubaine which is situated in the country that is called as mali and this was earlier a kind of example of rift valley lake because of the continental continental divergence that is happening in africa there are several rift valley lakes situated in the uh, east african as well as west african rift valley but however due to the continuous expansion of desertification or we can say continuous expansion of sahara desert to the south the lake has been converted into kind of dry area converted into kind of desert area and for that is why a uh, initiative called as green wall initiative has been put into practice so that the uh, uh, in in this in the desert area we can increase the overall grass cover next is again a very factual question gandhi kutta canyon of south india was created by which of the following river so it is the pennar river in the andhra pradesh region that has created a canyon canyon is a kind of broad and wide valley that is created due to flow of the rivers in the plateau region so that is the andhra pradesh by pennar river next again is related to the peak and mountain so namcha barwa we know that case of himalayas himalaya extend from west to east so namcha barwa is the easternmost peak of himalayas in india lying in the state of arunachal pradesh where brahmaputra river takes a u turn so garhwal is the region that is lying in uttarakhand so obviously this statement will be incorrect namcha barwa will be arunachal pradesh arunachal himalayas not part of garhwal himalayas nanda devi part of kumau himalayas that is correct kumau is a himalayan mountain system Himalayan ranges in the state of Uttarakhand, and that is where the peak of Nanda Devi is situated. Third is Nokrek in the Sikkim Himalayas, that is also incorrect. Nokrek Biosphere Reserve and the Nokrek Peak is situated in the Arunachal Pradesh again. So the correct option will be B. Only second is the correct statement. Next, the term Levant. Levant was a term that has that is going on in news for past we can say seven eight years due to the development of this terrorist organization that was called as ISIL or ISIS that is Islamic State in. Iraq uh, Islamic state in Iraq and Syria and also it is called as Islamic state in Iraq and Levant region so Levant actually is a region that covers the Mediterranean eastern Mediterranean shore where we have countries like Israel Jordan and Syria are situated so correct option will be a region along the eastern Mediterranean shore around Israel Jordan and Syria border then again next is again a map based question where the question is very simple and this can be done by elimination method because if you try to understand which of the following countries have border with afghanistan so we know that if you look at the position of afghanistan somewhere here azerbaijan is very very far away from afghanistan azerbaijan lies to the uh, we can say nearby black sea region while afghanistan is land locked country far away from the black sea so if we eliminate azerbaijan then itself we are left with only one option that is 3 4 and 5 countries like tajikistan turkmenistan uzbekistan have bordered afghanistan while azerbaijan and kyrgyzstan do not border the afghanistan 
Now coming to the 28th question with reference to India, consider the following statements. Monazite is a source of rare earth. That is correct. Monazite is a very uh, monazite is a kind of sand that is found in the coastal regions of India, and we have the largest reserves of monazite in the Kerala. Monazite contains thorium. That is absolutely correct because the main advantage which India has is India has the largest uh, reserve of monazite, and thus India has the largest reserve of thorium. And as per the India's three-stage nuclear power plant. Power plan given by Homi Jahangir Bhabha. In next 50 to 60 years, India should become independent enough that it can utilize thorium as a nuclear fuel. And once India started to do so, it will become independent because it will not have to import uranium from other countries. So, first and second statement is correct. Third is monazite occurs naturally in the entire coastal sand in India. That is incorrect. Largely, it is found in the states, uh, coastal states of Kerala, Odisha, and Andhra Pradesh. In the state like Karnataka, Gujarat, and Maharashtra, we do not have monazite sands. Fourth is in India government bodies only can process or export monazite. That is also absolutely correct. Currently, it is the government PSU that is public sector undertaking which is responsible for processing and exporting of monazite. So, correct option will be 1, 2, and 4, that is B. Then in the northern hemisphere, the longest day of the year normally occurs. And this is again a very, very simple question, especially if you have read the NCRTs and the basics, uh, your basics of geography is clear. So, we know that what happens in the longest day occurs. When the sun is directly overhead tropic of Cap Cancer, that happens on 21st of June. So, the correct option will be the second half of the month of June when we have the longest day short at night. Opposite will be true if the sun is overhead tropic of Capricorn, that is around 22nd of September. In that case, we have the shortest day and the longest night in the northern hemisphere. Then again, we have a factual question that is related to the location of wetlands. We have Hokira wetland in Punjab, that is incorrect. Hokira wetland is a very famous wetland in Jammu and Kashmir. Renuka wetland in Himachal Pradesh, that is absolutely correct. Rul Sagar Lake, that is in Tripura, that is also absolutely correct. And then we have Sastam Kota Lake in Tamil Nadu, that is incorrect. The Sastam Kota Lake is situated in the state of Kerala. So, how many pairs are correctly matched? This is again a new type of options or new type of question pattern we can see the UPSC has asked this year. So, only two pairs are correctly matched here. Then the 31st is a science and tech based question where they have asked that out of all these four apps, which of these are built on top of open source digital platforms. Open source digital platforms are such kind of platforms where the source code of development of platforms are freely available to all the users and then users can take this source code and modify as per their needs and requirement. And that is why it makes the development of the apps much more cheaper and different. So the correct option is that all these four apps all these four apps back to basically a government developed app and the source code are freely available. So these are examples of open source digital platforms. Next is again SNT based question where question has been asked regarding web 3.0. So again all the three statements about web 3.0 is correct. It is a technology that enables people to control their own data. In the web 3.0 world there can be blockchain based social network and web 3.0 is operated by users collectively rather than a corporation. So correct option will be D, 1, 2 and 3. Then again science and tech that is with reference to software as a service consider the following statement. Again all the three options here are correct. SaaS buyers can customize the user interface and can generate data field. SaaS users can access their data through the mobile devices that is correct and Outlook, Hotmail and Yahoo Mail are the form of the software as a service. The next is we can say defense sector question which which of the following statement best reflect the idea behind the fractional orbital bombardment system. This was news because both Russia and China have successfully tested this kind of system and in this kind of system a missile is basically put into a stable orbit around the earth and depending on which target it is bound to hit it gradually start to de decay in its orbit and it start to deorbit over a target on the earth. That means if earth is here it start to deorbit gradually start to fall down toward the earth. So, correct option will be C. Then 35 is a term qubit. Qubit is again something that is referred to quantum computing. Qubit is basically a quantum bit. It is short form of quantum bit. So, it is related to the quantum computing. In general computing terms, use terms like bit bytes. So, just qubit is quantum bytes, quantum bits. Then 36, consider the following communication technology, which of these are considered as short range devices. So, again we know that by our common experience also, closed circuit television, RFID that we are using uh, these days at the toll gates and the WLAN wireless local area network all these have very short term or very short range communication devices. So correct option will be D, 1, 2 and 3. 
The next is regarding biofilms. So biofilms can form on medical implants within human tissues. That is correct. Second is it can form on food and food processing service. This is also true. And third is it can exhibit antibiotic resistance. That is why biofilms were very much in use last year because it is found that they have antibiotic resistance because of development of the gram negative bacteria on their surface. So the correct option will be all the three, one, two, and three D. Then regarding probiotics are made of both bacteria and yeast. That is correct. Second is the organism in probiotics are found in foods we ingest, but they do not naturally occur in our gut. That is incorrect. The probiotics also occur in our gut as well. And probiotics help in the digestion of milk sugar. That is correct statement. So correct option for this is C, 1 and 3. Then we have obviously the COVID has been used for past two, three years. So COVID based question in the context of vaccines manufactured to prevent COVID-19 pandemic. Consider the following statements. The Serum Institute of India produced COVID-19 vaccine named Covisil using mRNA platform. That is incorrect. Second is a Sputnik 5 vaccine manufactured using vector, plat vector based platform. That is correct. Covaxin is the inactivated pathogen based vaccine. That is correct. So it is 2 and 3 only. Forty is if a major solar storm, which is also called a solar flare, reaches the earth, which of the following are the possible effects on the earth? Now, why this question has been asked? Because India is planning to send its first solar mission that is called as Aditya L1. And the main purpose of Aditya L1 is to understand this phenomena of solar flares, especially that ejects out from the coronal region of the sun, also referred as coronal mass ejection. So, why we are under, and apart from that, NASA already is planning to, or already has sent a uh, space probe that is called as Parker Solar Probe. So, both Parker Solar Probe, Aditya L1 is trying to understand solar flares. And why it is important? Because it is believed that a very strong solar flare is able to reach the earth. It can affect the GPS and navigation system. It can cause collapse and the damage to the power grid. It can cause intense auroras. Auroras are the brightening lights in the upper part of the atmosphere due to collision of the charged particles from the sun and the magnetic field of the earth. Fifth is forest fire could take place. Sixth is orbit of satellites. Again, because if satellites are damaged, their orbit can obviously be disturbed. Sort of ready communication aircraft flying over polar regions could be interrupted because it can disrupt the magnetic transmission of electromagnetic waves. So that can disrupt the communication. So obviously, the correct answer is that if you try to look at these options, the tsunamis do not have to do anything with the solar flares. Tsunami are basically uh, occurring on the Earth's surface, mainly due to disturbance in the plate of the Earth and mainly due to earthquake-like activities or we have landslides, volcanism. So tsunamis cannot be generated because of the solar storms. And similarly, if you talk about forest fire, they could not take place uh, or place over much of the planets. This is also a very extreme kind of statement that if solar flares reach the earth, all the forests will start to catch fire. So the correct option will be apart from these second and two, five, one, three, four, and six, seven can be the possible outcome of the solar flares. Coming to question number 41, that is the climate action tracker. Again, it is a factual question from the environment and biodiversity, which monitors the emission reduction places of different countries. So it is nothing but a database that has been created by coalition of research organizations. Then coming to question 42, again from environment and biodiversity. The climate group is an international non-profit organization that drives climate action by building large network and runs them. This statement is correct. International Energy Agency is partnering with the climate group launched a global initiative called EP100. This is incorrect statement. EP100 brings together leading companies committed to driving innovation energy efficiency and increasing competitiveness while delivering an emission reduction goals. This is correct. Some Indian companies are member of EP100. That is absolutely correct. Internal International Energy Agency is secretary to under two coalition. This is incorrect statement. So correct option will be 1, 3 and 4. Then next is question number 43. That if rainforest and tropical forest can be considered as a lumps of the earth, then surely wetlands function as its kidneys. Now, which of the following function of wetland best reflects the above statement? So obviously what we can see, we are comparing the rainforest with the lungs. Why lungs? Because it purifies our atmosphere, because it takes up the carbon dioxide and releases the oxygen, which is very much vital for the sustainability of life on the earth. Now, what is the function of kidney in human body? It actually absorbs or we can say it actually filters all the waste product, all the damaging product and then discharge it out of our body. So same thing is done by wetlands also because the aquatic plants that we find in the wetlands, they absorb the heavy metals, toxic metals and the excess nutrients from the water and thus is acting like purifier of water. So in this, in this context, the correct definition should be 
D option. Question number 44. In the context of WHO air quality guidelines, consider the following statement. Again, this is a very factual question. So this first statement is absolutely correct. This is the WHO guidelines regarding PM 2.5 and PM 10. Second statement is incorrect because the highest level of ozone pollution that we see occur during the period of inclement weather. Now, inclement weather is something that is referred as cold weather, rainy weather. But the highest level of ozone we find when we have heat wave like condition, when the weather is very, very hot, not cold. So this is incorrect. Second is PM10 can penetrate the lung barrier, enter the bloodstream. This is absolutely a correct statement. Four excessive ozone in the air can trigger asthma. Obviously, ozone when it present in the lower atmosphere act as a pollutant and can damage, cause damage to the lungs and can cause asthma like condition. So the correct option is A, 1, 3 and 4. Then question number 45 with reference to Gucci. Gucci is something that is a kind of fungus that grows in the Himalayan region. So it is a fungus, it is a kind of mushrooms, mushroom is a type of fungus, that is correct statement. Second is it grows in some Himalayan forest area, that is correct, it is grows in the uh, Uttarakhand and Himachal region of Himalaya. Third it is commercially cultivated in the Himalayan food is not sustainable, this is incorrect. It cultivated in the western Himalayas and it is also not cultivated in northeastern Himalaya. So correct option will be C, 1 and 2 only. 46 is regarding PET, that is polyethylene terephthalate. So, its fiber can be blended with wool and cotton fibers to reinforce the properties that is correct. Pet is many times blended in woolen, uh, woolen uh, we can say clothing or even cotton clothing to make it more uh, durable. Second is containers made of it can be used to store any alcoholic beverage that is incorrect statement because alcohol reacts with pet and it will be uh, difficult or it can be damaging to uh, consume such alcohol. Third is bottles made of it can be recycled into other products that is true. Pet is fully recyclable, 100% recyclable. Fourth is articles made of it can be easily disposed of by insulation without causing greenhouse gas emission. That is incorrect. GH emission to some extent will be uh, caused due to the pet burning. So correct option is A that is 1 and 3. 47 again very straightforward, easy, very easy question we can say which of the following is not a bird. So out of all these three the first option is the golden mashir. Golden mashir is a species of fish that is found in the freshwater uh, regions of the earth and is a freshwater fish. So correct option is A, golden mercy. Next is which of the following are nitrogen fixing plant? Nitrogen fixing plants legumes are very well known nitrogen fixing plant that take up nitrogen from the atmosphere and fix it into the uh, soil. So we know that chickpea it is kind of legumes. So obviously the correct option will be three. So we can eliminate option C and option D. Then spinach is something that is a type of grass. So it is not a nitrogen fixing plant. So we can remove the spinach. Then only option left with 1, 3 and 4. So alfalfa plant, chickpea plant and the clovers. These are the nitrogen fixing plants. So correct absent option will be A. In 49th, again a term has been asked that is but what is a bio rock technology? In which of the following situation it is used? So bio rock technology is a method that is adopted by scientists so that it can restore the damaged coral reefs all across the world. Today, coral reefs are damaged, being damaged all across the world mainly because of the incidences of increase in temperature. We can say due to direct result of global warming and increase in pollution. So, bio rock can go a long way in restoration of coral reef. The 50th question is the Miyawaki method. Miyawaki is very known scientist from well known scientist from Japan, and he actually developed a system that how a mini forest like areas can be created in the urban regions because urban regions we are having very large scale development of or concretization and that is why we are continuously cutting down the forest. So the green trees need to be preserved in one or other way and you can see in the uh, countries like Singapore this method is being very uh, vociferously or we can say very uh, uh, significantly used by many of the uh, urban areas or urban centers. So it is a method of creation of many forest in urban areas that is the Miyabak method. That concludes the first part of your UPSC prelims GS1 paper. The next part will discuss by my colleague Mr. Swas. Thank you very much. Hello everyone. Welcome to Legacy Age Academy. In this video, we will be discussing about the UPSC preliminary questions from the question number 51 to 100. The first part of this video has already been uploaded, which contains the analysis of the questions from 1 to 50. Okay, that is done by Gaurav sir. So before continuing with this video, please ensure that you have watched that video. So let's start with question number 51. 
It is about the Government of India Act of 1919. So you can classify this as a question from modern history. So with this something, the article, the 1919 Montego Clevis Water Farms is something that is very well expected question. So the Government of India Act of 1919, the functions of the provincial government were divided into reserved list and transferred subjects. Okay, this is something that happened in the 1919 Act. Diarchy was introduced in the provinces and bicameral legislature was introduced at the center. Okay, this is something that we have studied in our class. So here the question wants us to differentiate between the reserved subjects and the transport subjects. Okay, here you already know that look at the option that is two local self government. By eliminating the second option that is local self government, we can easily come to the correct answer that is the option C one three and four because local self government was a transfer subject. and not a reserve subject question number 52 in medieval india the term funam is referred to this is something that is that i consider this as a difficult question because this term funam has not been widely discussed in the prescribed sources okay so the term funam means coins in the medieval south india that is somewhere around 14th century a term called funam was used in south india for coins consider the following freedom fighters we have a series of modern history questions from um, question number 50 remember we are discussing the set a okay we are discussing the set a <clears throat> consider the following freedom fighters varindra kumar ghosh jogesh chandra chatterjee rash bihari ghosh who of the following were actively associated with ghadar party Ghadar party is something that is widely given in the spectrum also, and we prescribe to study it from the NCERT as well. So Ghadar party becomes important. So the question asked here is, who among the following these freedom fighters were a part of Ghadar party? See, Raj Bihari Bose, you can easily say he was a part of Ghadar party, a mainstream leader. You will be confused between Varindra Kumar Bose and Jogi Chandra Chatterjee. Okay, you already know that Varindra Kumar Bose and Jogi Chandra Chatterjee were. the freedom fighters and revolutionaries so you don't have the option 1 2 and 3 here so the correct option is rash bihari bose who was widely known for his association with ghadar party though varindra kumar ghosh and jogi chandra chatterjee were revolutionaries they were not associated with ghadar party here the next question the question number 54 with reference to the proposals of crips mission crips mission that was in the year 1942 Consider the following statements. This question is something that is considered to be a sitter question, which means all serious UPSC aspirants would have made this question correct. The Constituent Assembly would have members nominated by the provincial assemblies as well as the princely states. Just by reading this question, you can know this is a wrong option. This is a wrong option because the nominated members were from the princely states, and the members from the provincial assemblies were. elected okay this is something that is a very widely known fact any province which is not prepared to accept the new constitution would have the right to sign a separate agreement with the british regarding the future status this is a correct one the second statement is correct so the option here is the correct option is option b with reference to indian history consider the following texts this is an ancient indian question it from ancient history so this is considered to be a difficult question because we study these and we will not give more importance to these texts here nettipakarana which is a widely known buddhist text and avadhana sataka which is also considered to be a buddhist text so here the jain texts that is asked in the question that is jain texts परिशिष्ट पर्व त्रिषष्टि लक्षण महापुराण और त्रिषष्टि लक्षण पुराण इज वॉट वी हैव स्टडी इन आर क्लासेस सो द करेक्ट ऑप्शन वुड बी टू एंड फोर बाय द मेथड ऑफ एलिमिनेशन ओके हियर द ऑप्शन एलिमिनेशन टेक्निक्स दैट यू हैव स्टडीड विल कम इनटू प्लेस सो बाय द मेथड ऑफ एलिमिनेशन वी कैन से वी एलिमिनेट ऑप्शन वन एंड ऑप्शन थ्री सो द करेक्ट आंसर इज टू एंड फोर द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन विथ रेफरेंस टू द इंडियन हिस्ट्री Consider the following pairs. Very difficult question. 
okay very unconventional question from the upsc point of view arya deva dinnaga and nathamuni okay this is dignaga who is also called as dinnaga okay here only two pairs are correct nathamuni is a vaishnava saint dinnaga is a buddhist scholar arya deva is not a jain scholar okay so here only two pairs are correctly matched the next question is 57 with reference to indian history consider the following statements very difficult again from the medieval history point very difficult question the first mongol invasion of india happened during the time of jalaluddin khilji okay you might know in the year 1292 is somewhere you have 1292 to 1295 is where you have the first mongol invasion happening that is during the time of jalaluddin khilji correct statement during the reign of alauddin khilji one of the mongol assault marched up to delhi and besieged the city okay which means it rounded up the city mohammad bin tughlaq temporarily lost portions of northwest of his kingdom to mongols these are the three statements given look at the statement 2 during the reign of alauddin khilji one mongol assault marched up to delhi and besieged the city here by all your knowledge of medieval history you can come to a conclusion that alauddin khilji was a very great military commander he actually expanded his kingdom in that case a mongol invasion coming to marching up to his capital city that is delhi and besieged the city something that is unusual okay you can you can apply your logical skills and uh, make sure that the statement 2 is incorrect so the correct option would be c that is 1 and 3 with reference to the indian history who among the following were called as kula dharan kula dharan this is the question asked so here the kula dharan refers to persian calligraphers with reference to indian history consider the following statements again a history from advent of europeans the dutch established their factories warehouses on the east coast on the lands granted to them by gajapati rulers here the upsc wants you to relate something that you have studied in your medieval history to the knowledge that you have from modern history alfonso t albuquerque captured goa from bijapur sultanate this is a very straight forward fact this event happened in the year 1510 the english east india company established a factory at madras on the plot of land leased from the representative of the vijayanagara empire suppose let's see the second statement just you know about the second statement you are very much unaware of 1 and 3 so just have a look at it second statement if you consider it as correct you can eliminate option c so now you just have option a option b and option d to find the correct answer the dutch established their factories warehouses on the east coast on the lands granted by gajapati rulers the history tells us that the dutch entered india in the year 1605 but but the gajapatis by 15th century by the second half of 15th century with the gajapatis declined so there can't be any chance where gajapatis have donated the land to dutch because their dynasty was ended by the time dutch entered india so statement 1 is incorrect so the correct option would be 2 and 3 that is option d according to kautilya's arthashastra which of the following statements are correct very very unconventional and very difficult question but if you know a bit of information about kautilya's arthashastra on slaves i'm sure you can could have got this question correct a person could be a slave as a result of judicial punishment If a female slave bore her master a son, she was legally free. If a son born to a female slave was fathered by her master, the son was entitled to the legal status of the master's son. These are the three statements, very confusing and something that we usually don't study from ancient history point of view. So how do we come to the conclusion? We know one thing about the slavery during the Mauryans. was that the slavery was legal and ethical okay slavery was ethical is something that we have studied in our classes so if you say slavery was ethical look at the second statement if a female slave bore her master a son 
she was legally free which means something that is liberal that is showing some liberal attitude so this can be correct you can you can use all your logical skills and with one information that you have from ancient history that is the slavery was ethical during the time of moguls you can consider the second statement as correct a person could be a slave as a result of judicial punishment which means a slave is something that is not only hereditary it can also be a punishment if you want to discredit this statement you have to prove that because of punishment slavery should not be a punishment or could not be a punishment during the time of moguls which is really impossible to prove that the judicial punishment should not involve slavery so with all this logical analytical skills you can consider first and second statements as correct so how do you consider the third statement as incorrect how do you consider this as wrong you can see here if a female slave born a child to the master then that particular child would have got the legal status of the master's son which means he would become eligible to inherit the property of the master do you think this can happen do you think a slave's son would have got the right to inherit the property of his father okay. this is something that is highly impossible this is something that is highly illogical to happen during the ancient times so using all such skills you can claim that option a that is 1 and 2 can be the right answer the next question is 61 from here we will have some economy questions tight monetary policy of us federal reserve could lead to capital flight capital flight may increase the interest cost of firms with existing external commercial borrowings devaluation of domestic currency decreases the currency risk associated with ecbs that is external commercial borrowings here we have studied about devaluation in your core economics this is something that is being followed by the chinese economy so devaluation of the domestic currency decreases the currency risk associated with ecbs rather this is an incorrect statement it rather increases the currency risk associated with external commercial borrowings so if you eliminate option 3 eliminate option 3 and you find the correct answer that is 1 and 2 consider the following states question number 62 andhra pradesh kerala himachal pradesh tripura how many of the above are generally known as tea producing states this is the question here only one state that is kerala is the correct answer though you find a bit of tea production in tripura and himachal pradesh but these two states are not known for the production of tea that is kerala which is the known for the production of tea question number 63 consider the following statements in india credit rating agencies are regulated by reserve bank of india very unlikely very straight forward incorrect statement rather than reserve bank of india the credit rating agencies are regulated by sebi securities and exchange board of india the rating agency popularly known as icra is a public limited company so eliminate option 1 and you find the answer this is how you use your option elimination techniques to find the answer you don't have to go through option the statement 2 and statement 3 just with the knowledge that you have from statement 1 you can claim the correct answer with reference to banks board bureau with respect to banks board bureau which of the following statements are correct the governor of rbi is the chairman of bank board bureau governor of rbi the present governor shaktikant das is he the chairman of bank boards bureau no he is not the present chairman of the bank board bureau is a person called bp sharma so both the posts are entirely different this can't happen bbb recommends for the selection of the heads of public sector banks very true it happens bbb helps the public sector banks in developing strategies and capital raising plans so eliminate option 1 you find the answer that is option 2 2 and 3 with reference to convertible bonds consider the following statements so in your economy you would have studied about convertible bonds as there is an option to exchange the bond for equity equity convertible bonds pay a lower interest rate very true the option to convert to equity affords the bond holder 
a degree of indexation to rising customer prices very true okay very easy question about the convertible bonds if you would have known a bit about convertible bonds for sure you would have marked this answer correctly consider the following again a very simple and uh, very logical something that you can answer from your knowledge of current affairs this is how the knowledge that you get from newspapers become really really handy in attempting upsc preliminaries asian infrastructure investment bank with the question india is a member of which of the following of the, which of the which of the above asian infrastructure investment bank aiib missile technology control regime mtcr Shanghai Cooperation Organization (SCO). All these organizations will be in use. So India is a part of all of these organizations. Consider the following statements. Sixty-seven. Looks difficult. The question looks difficult. When you go through the options, you can easily eliminate. You can easily eliminate. Vietnam is led by a multi-party political system. Look at the option two. Statement two. Vietnam is a communist country. Like China, we do not have multi-party political system which subscribe to democracy in Vietnam. So eliminate option two. Okay, you eliminate A and you eliminate D. You have B and C. Okay. Now look at the fifth statement. Vietnam has the most productive e-service sector in the Indo-Pacific region. The Indo-Pacific region is something that is very crucial, which has been in use. So you would know Japan is a part of Indo-Pacific. South Korea is a part of Indo-Pacific. Switzerland, New Zealand is a part of uh, Indo-Pacific. Australia is a part of Indo-Pacific. USA is a part of Indo-Pacific. Okay, all these developed countries, which are very uh, ranked high in developing cutting-edge technology, are a part of Indo-Pacific. In this case, Vietnam has the most productive e-service sector. This is an extreme statement. We always tell students at Legacy IAS that if you find an extreme statement. Make sure you read it twice, thrice, and then mark the answer. So fifth statement is wrong. So eliminate the statement two and statement five, and you get the answer that is C. One, three, and four. It looks difficult, but is not as difficult as it looks. Sixty-eight. In India, which one of the following is responsible for maintaining price stability by controlling inflation? This is one question in the hundred prelims GS questions. That should be marked correct by all of you. Okay, this is Reserve Bank of India. We also have a system called MPC, that is Monetary Policy Committee, which comes up with bi-monthly policy that which which targets inflation. That is CPI. This is a very basic question, and you should be getting this correct. Sixty-nine NFTs. NFTs were in news from uh, the cryptocurrencies and the NFTs launch in India. And the launch of central bank-based digital currency NFTs were in use, so you should be knowing about NFTs. If you have the basic idea about NFTs, for sure you would have got this question correct. They enable the digital representation of the physical assets. Very true. They are unique cryptographic tokens that exist on blockchain. Very true. They can be traded or exchanged at equivalency, and therefore can be used as a medium of Commercial transaction. This is something that is highly impossible. NFTs being used as a medium for the commercial transactions. No, that is highly impossible. So you can eliminate option the statement three and uh, mark the option A, that is one and two, as the correct answer. Seventy. Reservoirs and states. Ghatta Prabha. Very well. It is not Telangana. It is Karnataka. Indira Sagar, Andhra Pradesh; Gandhi Sagar, Madhya Pradesh; Maithon, Chhattisgarh. Okay. Here, make sure the question is asking which of the given pairs are not correctly matched. So the first statement is not correctly matched. Gandhi Sagar, Madhya Pradesh; Indira Sagar, Andhra Pradesh. You all know Indira Sagar is not in Andhra Pradesh. But it is also in Madhya Pradesh, so the third is also correct, incorrect. Maithon is not in Chhattisgarh; it is in Jharkhand. So three pairs are incorrectly matched. So the correct match is just Gandhi Sagar, that is in Madhya Pradesh. 
Okay, this is the first time that UPSC is coming up with such options. Usually, it would be one only one, one and two only, one two three only, and all of the above. These would be the options all these days. So here, UPSC has come up with one more uh, new thing this year that is giving like this: one pair is correct, two pairs are correct, three pairs are correct, something like this. And if the options are like this, then it becomes difficult for the option elimination to happen. Seventy-one. In India, which of the following compiles the information on the industrial disputes, closures, retrenchments, and layoffs in factories employing workers? Concentrate here. Factories employing workers. So it has to be Labour Bureau, and that's the correct answer. In India, what is the role of Coal Controllers Organisation? Coal Controllers Organisation comes under the Ministry of Coal. Okay. Is a major source of coal statistics in the government of India. Very true. It monitors the progress in the development of captive coal blocks. Very true. It hears any objection to the government's notification relating to the acquisition of the coal bearing areas. No, this is not a tribunal or an adjudicating body. Coal controllers organization is something that collects data on the production of coal. Okay, from all over the state and publishes it. That is the role of coal controllers uh, organization, and it is not a tribunal or an adjudicating body. So eliminate option three, and you get the answer. That is one, two, and four. And make sure the headquarters of the coal controllers organization is in Kolkata. So just for an extra information, if a particular area is brought under the fifth schedule, very very simple. If you have read quality at least once twice, then you should be able to do this. This would prevent the transfer of land of tribal people to non-tribal people. Okay, this is a very this was a very easy question. You should be getting this correct. Look at this statement. How? What will be the range of options given in the UPSC? Just to give you an example, this would convert that area into a union territory. This is something that is very very vague options. So if you know the subject, you will find some three to four questions where you will have some. options and these options just by looking at these options in the exam hall you will have a smile on your face okay these are some of the options which will give you some some smile on your face because you will be more confident about your preparation the next question that is uh, question number 74 the indian sanitation coalition okay which was in news indian sanitation coalition was in news so you should be knowing about this to promote sustainable sanitation and is funded by the government of india and the world health organization very much incorrect it is funded by fiki okay it is funded by fiki f i c c i okay so the correct option would be b that is two only which one of the following has been constituted under the environmental protection act an environment question already central ground water authority very obvious one very easy one With reference to the United Nations Credentials Committee, consider the following statements. It is a committee set up by the UN Security Council and works under its supervision. See, United Nations Credential Committee will not work or is not constituted by UNSC. It is constituted by UNGA, that is United Nations General Assembly. So. first option is gone so you eliminate option b and option d the second statement it traditionally meets in march june and september every year not at all correct it traditionally meets in the month of november or december so that is the year end so the only thing left is the option a 76 3 only is the correct answer 77 Which one of the following statements best describes polar code? It is an international code of safety for the ships operating in polar waters. Okay, this is the correct answer. With reference to the United Nations General Assembly, consider the following statements: The UN United Nations General Assembly can grant observer status to the non-member states. Very true. Intergovernmental organizations can seek observer status in the United Nations General Assembly. very true permanent observers in the united nations general assembly can maintain missions at the un headquarters very true so the correct option is 1 2 and 3 with reference to t board in india t board in india 
consider the following statements the t board is a statutory body correct the regulatory body attached to the ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare incorrect the t board is associated with the ministry of commerce and industry and not agriculture and farmers welfare so eliminate option 2 so you can eliminate option b here if you eliminate statement 2 the t board head office is situated in bangalore no the head office of the t board is situated at kolkata so the correct option is d that is 1 and 4 Which one of the following best describes green washing? This was in news, so you should be knowing if you're following the current affairs regularly. You should be knowing about green washing, conveying a false impression that the company's products are eco-friendly and environmentally sound is something that is called as green washing. Question number eighty-one: High clouds primarily reflect the solar radiation. Low clouds have high absorption of the infrared radiation. emanating from the earth surface and thus cause warming effect okay here simple thing the high clouds and the low clouds the definition or the characteristics has been interchanged so the option is the option d neither one nor two it is just in interchange consider the following statements bdbd is a large refugee camp settlement in the north western part of kenya Some people who fled from South Sudan civil war live in Bidibidi. Okay, possible. Some people who fled from civil war in Somalia live in the Bab the Bab refugee complex in Kenya. Possibly correct. Very difficult. Again, a very difficult question. I wouldn't recommend you to take a guess on this question unless and until you know the actual location of Bidibidi. This is located in Uganda. so you can um, eliminate statement 1 and uh, if you know that these two things from the current affairs then you can claim that option c that is 2 and 3 is the correct answer but very unusual these are these questions are something that are meant to be left questions okay they are to be left and you should not employ all your option elimination techniques when you are answering such questions consider the following countries again something that you can get with option elimination Which of the following members of the are, are a part of organization of Turkic states? Look at Romania here. Romania, a Europe European country, not be a part of organization of Turkic states. So you can eliminate four. If you eliminate four, you're left with B, C, and D. Okay, D also you can eliminate. So you're left with B and C. That is one, three, and two, five. Look at two, five here. Two Azerbaijan. And five is Uzbekistan. Okay, you can mark option C, that is two five, as the correct option. Okay, that is Azerbaijan and Uzbekistan. These are the part of the organization of Turkic states. Eighty four. Gujarat has the largest solar park in India. Badla region of Rajasthan has the largest solar park in India. So this was in news. So you can now uh, easily mark this as incorrect. Kerala has the fully solar powered international airport you don't know possibly let's keep it on hold Goa has the largest floating solar photovoltaic project in India no it was Tamil Nadu which was recently in news okay that has the largest solar floating solar photovoltaic power plant so if you can now eliminate the both the statement 1 and statement 3 the only thing left would be statement 2 even if you don't know this fact even if you don't know this fact you can Easily arrive at the answer by eliminating the other options. So option elimination is something that can help you to clear this exam and not just the knowledge. With reference to the United Nations Convention on the Law of Sea, and class United Nations Convention on the Law of Sea, consider the following statements: A coastal state has the right to establish the breadth of its territorial sea up to a limit of not exceeding 12 nautical miles. Measured from the baseline determined in accordance with the convention. Very correct, obvious. Ships of all states, whether coastal or the landlocked, enjoy the right of innocent passage through the territorial sea. Very correct. The exclusive economic zone, also called as EEZ, shall not extend beyond 200 nautical miles from the baseline from which the breadth of territorial sea is measured. Very correct. So all three statements are correct. If you have 
had a very basic idea about exclusive economic zone. Okay, you will have something called as contiguous zone. You will have territorial waters, and then you have open sea that is exclusive economic zone up to 220 miles. If you have a basic idea about the exclusive economic zone, which stretches up to 200 nautical miles, then it, it's, it won't be difficult for you to answer this question. The next question, question number 86, which one of the following statements best reflects the issue with Sen Kaku Islands, sometime mentioned in news. Sen Kaku Islands, it was widely mentioned in news, which is disputed between Japan and China. Look at the statement B here. China and Japan engage in maritime disputes over this island in the East China Sea. Very correct. Okay, which was an easy one. If you have been following the newspaper, then this is something that is very easy for you. The next question, a very difficult one, a very difficult question. Country, an important reason for being in the news recently. Chad, Guinea, Lebanon, Tunisia. Chad, Guinea, Lebanon, Tunisia. Chad setting up of permanent military base by China. The country was not Chad, it was Ethiopia here, where China started establishing its permanent military base. Guinea, suspension of constitution and the government by military, supposing you don't know this. Lebanon, severe and prolonged economic depression, that's the reason why the Lebanon was in use. Tunisia, suspension of parliament by the president, okay, this is why Tunisia was also in use. Okay, here three and four are correct. So the only two pairs are correct. So this is a very difficult question. If you, you can't employ all your option elimination techniques in this. So the option, the correct answer is B, that is only two. Consider the following pairs. Again, you can use your uh, option elimination techniques here. Look at this, Catalonia, Italy. Catalonia was in use because there was also a referendum that happened, but Catalonia is a part of Spain and not Italy. So you can eliminate this. Anatolia, Turkey, Amhara, Ethiopia, Cabo, Delgado, Spain. This is something that is given. Anatolia is in Turkey, correct? Amhara is, no, is in Ethiopia. Cabo, Delgado is not in Spain, it is in Mozambique, okay, Mozambique, so here the correct option is only two pairs, that is option B, only two are correct, okay, again I would consider this as a very difficult question where which requires you to have an in-depth knowledge about the places in use, here you could easily identify Catalonia because that was in use, the Anatolia Amhara and Cabo de Gado was difficult. So you shouldn't be using all your option elimination techniques and uh, be have that ego to attempt this question. So you can easily leave this question apart. Next, 89. With reference to Indian laws about uh, wildlife protection, consider the following statements. Wild animals are the sole property of the government. Very true. When a wild animal is declared protected, such animal is entitled for equal protection, whether it is found in the protected area or outside. For example, if the tiger is found in Bangalore, okay, it's not as the right of people to kill tiger because it is not in a protected area or it is outside the protected area. It will enjoy the same status or which is mentioned in Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. So this is a correct statement. Apprehension of the protected wild animal becoming a danger to human life is sufficient ground for its capture or killing. See, if you find a wild animal here, wherever in your place, for example, let's say in Delhi, you find a wild animal. It doesn't mean the civilian can kill the wild animal and escape. Okay. So it is the authorities which have the power to capture and not people. Okay. If you find a wild animal, so it is good on your part, you have to intimate the authority responsible for it and you should not take law into your hands. No. So this is not not so great. So the correct answer is option A, that is 1 and 2. 90th question. Certain species of which of the following organisms are well known as cultivators of fungi. Okay, people who have the biology background who have keen interest in zoology and uh, insects. 
they can get this question correct and not something that is very conventional okay very di a difficult one a confusing one and cockroach traps private you cannot um, use any of your option elimination techniques or logic in this so cockroach is the correct answer unless and until you are very sure about this that you have come across this then it, else it becomes difficult to answer this 91 we will have some uh, stick questions from here consider the following pairs akbar's edict dhauli odisha correct erragudi andhra pradesh correct Jogada, Madhya Pradesh, correct. Kalsi is in Uttarakhand and not in Karnataka. So the correct option is the three, only three pairs are correct. This is option C. 92, very difficult one again from um, ancient history. Nanuka, Chandela, Jaya Shakti. Paramara dynasty, incorrect. Jaya Shakti also belong to Chandela dynasty. Nagabata two, Gurjara Pratiharas, correct. Bhoja is not from Rashtrakuta dynasty. Bhoja is again from Paramara dynasty. So unless and until you have gone through about all these dynasties and the kings, it becomes difficult to answer this. So this I would consider as a very difficult question. So I think this is the fourth or the fifth question that I'm considering as a very difficult from 50 to 100. Which one of the following statements about the Sangam literature in the ancient South India is correct? This is something that you can't afford to miss. There is Sangam literature. Look at the statement B. The social classification of Varna was known to Sangam poets. Okay, this is something that you can't discredit for. How do you say that Sangam poets did not know Varna system? We have studied in Sangam that uh, the social stratification was present. So in that case, it, it would become very unusual or impossible to claim that the Sangam did not know about Varna system or not. Next question, Yoga Vasishta was translated into Persian by Nizamuddin Paniputi during the reign of. Here, here you can easily make some guesses. Like Aurangzeb was a very orthodox ruler. This is what you have studied in our uh, medieval history. Aurangzeb was known for his religious orthodoxy. In this case, do you think Aurangzeb would have promoted the study of Sanskrit and Yoga Vasishta be translated to Persian? Very unlikely. Shah Jahan and Humayun, we will consider the case of Shah Jahan. Very unlikely again, can't happen. Humayun has two different phases where from 1530 to 40 he is ruling, from 40 to 55 he is not there, and that period is by Sher Shah Suri. And again he comes back at 1555 and recaptures the kingdom. So he did not have that time to think of the scholars in his kingdom or to think about the Sanskrit literature and getting translated into Persian. So the only option that was left was our Akbar, where Akbar was a tolerant man. He is also known for his policies of Din Ilahi and Sulay Aikun. This is what we have studied in our uh, medieval classes. So you can you can take a guess that Akbar can be a correct answer, and Akbar is the correct answer. Next question, ninety-five. World's second tallest statue in sitting position of Ramanuja was inaugurated by the Prime Minister of India at Hyderabad. This was in news. And uh, you should be knowing something about Ramanuja Acharya's philosophy. Which one of the following statements correctly represents the teachings of Ramanuja? We had told you in class that the Ramanuja Acharya's philosophy is something that is very important. You should not be missing it. So the correct option is option A. The best means of salvation was devotion. This is what Ramanuja Acharya subscribed to. The Prime Minister recently inaugurated the new circuit house near Somnatha Temple. At Verawal, which of the following statements are correct regarding Somanatha Temple? Somanatha Temple is widely known for its invasion by Muhammad Ghazni. So look at the statement too. Al Beruni, who was also the contemporary of Muhammad Ghazni, the statement says the description of the Somanatha was given by Al Beruni. 
You all know that the Alberoni was a contemporary of Mohammad Ghazni, so it's highly possible that Alberoni would have documented about Somnatha. So statement two is correct. Somnatha temple is one of the twelve Jyotirlingas, correct? There are twelve Jyotirlingas, and Somnatha is one among that. Prana Pratishta of the Somnatha temple was done by the president S. Radha Krishnan. This is very incorrect statement. This Prana Pratishta apna of uh, the Somnatha temple was done by Rajendra Prasad in the year Sri Rajendra Prasad ji in the year 1951. Okay, not by the president S. Radha Krishnan. Which one of the following statements best describes the role of B cells and T cells in the human body? If you have been following the newspaper since COVID-19, then this is something that you will be hearing about: B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. So they protect human body from diseases caused by pathogens. They are like our immune system. They are the immune system. Consider the following statements. Other than those made by humans, nanoparticles do not exist in nature. Nanoparticles do not exist in nature. Nanoparticles of some metallic oxides are used in the manufacture of some cosmetics. Are used in the manufacture of some cosmetics. Nanoparticles of some metallic oxides. So some metallic oxides are used in some cosmetics. Possibly, if you want to discredit this, either the metallic oxides should be toxic, but all metallic oxides are not toxic. So you can consider this statement as correct. Nanoparticles of some commercial products which enter the environment are unsafe for humans. Very true. So statement two and three are correct. Statement one: Other than those made by humans, the nanoparticles do not exist in nature, which means the nanoparticles are not at all natural. This is highly impossible. Nanoparticles are both natural and artificially manufactured. So the correct option is D. That is two and three. Consider the following statements: DNA barcoding can be a tool to assess the age of plant or animal. No, DNA barcoding is something with which you will know or you will identify a species as such. That is the application of DNA barcoding. Look at the second statement: distinguish among the species that look alike. Correct. Identify undesirable animal or plant materials in the processed food. Correct. So the option is the correct option is option D. That is two and three. And the last question for today: Consider the following: carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxide, ozone, sulfur dioxide. Excess of which of the following causes acid rain? See, imagine you don't know anything about acid rain. You are confused between carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxide, ozone, and sulfur dioxide. From your school, we have been studying something called as ozone layer. That is O three. Okay, we have been studying about this, and we also know that this ozone protects us from the harmful ultraviolet rays. So, if the ozone is more, then because of ozone, we should have been facing acid rain from the inception of the or from the formation of the Earth, from the time Earth formed. Because of the ozone, acid rain should have been so frequent, and life wouldn't have existed. So, we can eliminate three. And you will have two, four, and four left. So two, four, nitrogen oxide and sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide both are very crucial, are very important for acid rain to occur. So excess of nitrogen oxide and sulfur dioxide causes acid rain. Okay, these are the questions that were asked in uh, today's prelims examination. So for more such uh, enriching content, please subscribe to Legacy AS Academy. Have a nice day. Thank you. All the best for your mains for people who have cleared prelims.